ladies and gentlemen, my name is Justin Brett from the Epic Ass Amazing episode of Messianic Tour Observant Followers of Yushua Hamashiach. Uh, it's going to be TV hopefully soon. That's the plan. So, anyways, I've got a word of prophecy against Pomeroy, Washington, the city of Pomeroy, Garfield County, Washington, perhaps the entire state and the area, uh, and just the wicked in general, okay? The wicked people. So, before I give this prophecy, comes out of Jeremiah uh, chapter 51, I believe. Um, before I give the prophecy, I just want to explain, I guess, why. Why why does Yahweh going to why is Yahweh gonna judge uh Pomeroy, Washington and Washington State as he's already sent uh you know if you read Leviticus you'll read about how he he sends signs to try to warn people to turn back from their sins and he'll punish them seven times for their sins and he'll he'll keep warning them and if they don't turn back then it's just gonna get worse. And the thing is is that they've shed innocent blood. They have convicted the innocent and persecuted the innocent they have made evil good and good evil and they have not amended or changed their ways as far as i know and i don't believe i'm supposed to expect them to um there's there's just so much wickedness going on around here in Pomeroy. It's, it's hard for me to describe no i'll just describe it how about that so first of all and i've been told this is a statewide problem this is a washington statewide problem because i've talked to authorities about the problems in the past, and they told me that this is a Washington state-wide problem. This is not just a Pomeroy Washington problem. This is a Washington state problem. And I believe them. And I believe it could even be bigger than that. It could be a federal problem. It could be a whole United States problem. It could be a United Nations problem. It could be a continental um, problem. So here's the issue with Pomeroy Washington and Washington state and I'm going to try to go through this quickly and concisely and get to every point. So the first thing to tell you, I was born in 1985. Okay, it is now 2022 according to the secular solar calendar, not the biblical calendar. And so the thing is, is that I'm sorry about the answer. So the thing is, I'm going to try not to say that. When I was a child, there was a lot of bad things going on at that time and probably before I was born because apparently I was born to confront these problems. That was one of the reasons that I was clear. That's why I was named Justin Chad, a justice warrior, uh, bright up means broadhead. And apparently that's the reason I was created or born was to confront these issues, one of the reasons. And basically a lot of children were being sexually abused, they were being uh, sexually assaulted, there were drugs, there was alcohol. And it was just the norm. It was the normal thing. I uh, go to school as a little child and the children were extremely violent. They were acting out because they were being abused and they wanted to bully me, hold me down, try to kill me, stomp on my chest in front of the teachers. Teachers did not care if I held up my hands to block uh, the attacks. Then the principal uh, told my parents that wasn't allowed, that blocking, that defending yourself was not allowed. You see, it's how they turn evil good and good evil. Defense is not allowed, but attacking is just playing. That's just playing when they attack you. That's what they said. So my parents worked very hard to take me out of uh, public school and put me in private school. And, you know, my dad, just the, the sacrifice he made so we could do that was just amazing. And so for all but six years of my childhood, I was in Christian school and then I had to return back again to public school to finish because um, the Christian school had closed. But that doesn't have to do with Pomeroy and Washington State. Pomeroy and Washington State. So again, these children were being abused. Uh, the Pomeroy de police, police Department seemed to know what was going on. The authorities must have known what was going on because the people knew what was going on. The people in town, there were, you know, known meth labs. Uh, there was, you know, uh, the serial pedophiles running around town at night, um, banging around things in alleys and flashing lights and running into people's houses and raping them. And, and I'd hear about it. And all these things, and I'd wonder, like, why don't they keep him in prison? Why don't they put him away? No, nope, they just keep letting him out. One time they brought him down to me. They thought I could change him somehow. They brought him down to the youth center I had, and it's crazy. And um, eventually they finally arrested him, put him in prison, and he got raped, and then they made a big deal out of that. But that's just, that's just more recent. I mean, this stuff's been going on for a long time, for many, many years. Uh, there was a mother here that sold her children to Mexico, 
um you know just lots of crazy stuff in this little tiny town this is supposed to be the holiest town in washington state that's what they claim statistically and that's what the pastor said um was that this is the holiest town in washington state the best town so if this is the best town in washington state then washington state is hell it's a horrible place if this is the best town in washington state and so basically um i did the basically um again huh i'm trying to avoid that so you got the sexual assault of minors. The police department was involved in covering it up. That's why the Pomeroy Police Department was closed in uh, 2001. They shut it down in 1999 for the investigation. And the only thing that came out in the papers was that a woman, a Pomeroy woman, purchased the photographs of her own son being molested in a photograph at a yard sale, turned it into the police. The police sat on it didn't do anything so she got an attorney and at that time the attorney was able to help her i uh, was able to get some justice in court because you that doesn't seem to exist anymore and uh they got the Palmer police department put away and she got seven hundred fifty thousand dollars i don't know how much of that her attorney got maybe two hundred fifty thousand i don't know he got a chunk of that i'm sure and so after that they turned everything over to the county uh sheriff's office but that didn't fix anything because, as far as I know, because um, after that, uh, my ex-wife got raped and her children got molested. And this is just my narrow view. I'm sure, th I know there's so much more evil going on than I'm aware of. And she turned to drugs and she got into bad situations and she ended up doing all kinds of evil things. I don't want to, you know, be slanderous. Well, it's not slanderous because it's true, but... I don't, I don't want to just say bad things about people. I'm just telling you the situation and the climate. So you've got this going on. What about the shedding of innocent blood? Because that was going on too. Even with and without abortion, there was shedding of innocent blood. So we'll talk about that. Um, during the investigation process where I was trying to figure out what was going on and how to get my ex-wife's kids back, there was a dispatcher down here at Garfield County, Washington uh, Sheriff's Office, and she was the wife at that time of a man named Bruce Lyle. And she stood there in the sheriff's office, told me and my ex-wife that she got to the bottom of all the crime and corruption in the county and she was going to solve it. A week later, she died in the mountains. And I think they tried to say it was a heart attack or something. I don't know what they said it was. Um, but it was mysterious that she stood right there in the sheriff's office, said that she had got to the bottom of all the corruption and was dead a week later. So that happened. And then, um, recently... I learned, well, I'll talk about something else. So I went to the doctor. This is related. I went to a doctor uh, three or four years ago uh, for a skin condition. And the the last doctor I saw there, um, he found out I just lost my job. And I was taking care of my grandmother because she had dementia. And he told me that because of that, my life was not worth living. My quality of life was not worth living. He asked me, he said, Justin, why don't you just go kill yourself? So I didn't go back to the doctor after that. I canceled my follow-up appointments. I told him, I'm like, I, I'm a believer in Yeshua Mashiach and Jesus Christ. Like, why would I do that? It doesn't even make any sense, right? So I got away from him and I didn't go back to the doctors. I just, only for like my eyes and my teeth, that sort of thing, um, a dermatologist. But I didn't go back to a regular doctor after that. And then um, I was taking care of my grandma, right? Since she, she had a real downturn in 2015 after I had been arrested, um, you know, for preserving the evidence of my ex-wife uh, selling drugs. Uh, that took a toll on my grandma, and she had surgery, and she had a gallbladder surgery because she had some, some sort of failure or something going on. She was toxic, and she, uh, she was not doing well. So the authorities not only destroyed my family, but they put a huge strain on my relatives as well and caused my grandma's decline, okay? And so I was taking care of her for several years. And during the last year, uh, when I took her to the doctor, called an ambulance, went to different hospitals, they all wanted to put her on comfort care. They all wanted her dead. And it didn't matter that my that she had a, a form that said that she was supposed to receive care and treatment of curable diseases. It didn't matter that her relatives filled out a Washington State Post form uh, which is what they require here. It's what the hospitals and the doctors require. They said that she was supposed to receive oxygen, BiPAP, all these different things, you know, that she's supposed to have. That didn't matter either. They, they said, put her in comfort care, take away all of her supplements, put her to death, right? That was the, that was the answer. That was the solution. And the thing was, is that she, she was drowning here 
in this house. She was drowning, uh, having congestive heart failure. She asked me for help in the last two weeks before that. She told me she wanted to live. She sat in the toilet asking for help. I gave her rescue breaths, called the ambulance. They refused to continue uh, helping her breathe. And then they decided it was okay. About almost three hours later, they decided it was okay to continue helping her breathing. But by that point, the damage that had been done from her lungs being filled with water and being forced to take lots of short breaths on her own rapidly and her heart rate was really high and they gave her oxygen and that was very bad for her to go that long without help. And so, you know, I, I asked them to help and they wouldn't. They wouldn't take her to the hospital. I asked them to take her to the hospital in Lewiston. They wouldn't do it. They said she was too unstable. So they let her go without breathing assistance for almost three hours because they said she was too critical and too unstable to move. Um, I mean, that doesn't make any sense. It's a contradiction. Uh, shedding innocent blood. The elderly, it doesn't even, you don't even have to be elderly. You could be unborn. You could be inside the womb. You could be young like me and go to a doctor and have them tell you your life isn't worth living and to go commit suicide. Or you could be an elderly person and the doctors will decide that your life is not worth living anymore and they won't help you if you ask for treatment. They won't help you if your relatives ask for treatment. They won't help you if the forms are filled out and they put down on the report that, that everybody said it was okay. Everybody said it was okay to pull the plug. Everybody said it's okay to neglect them. Everybody said no. Then I go back and ask and, and I've been told that not everybody said that, that that was not the truth. And, um, and I believe them. So... It, you, here in Pomeroy, Washington, it's just death. It's just death. It's, yeah, I used to think there were some people that were pro-death, like they smoke and they don't like their lives and they don't want to live anymore. But it's not just that. They, the people don't want other people to live either. They don't want me to live. They don't want my grandma to live. They, she's dead now. They don't want people to live. They want people to die, not just themselves, but others, because it's a religion. It's a religious belief. It's a philosophy. It's a psychology. It's not just that they want to die, but they want everybody else to die too, which is similar to some religious practices and beliefs out there, some paganism, uh, where they believe that life itself is suffering and the answer is to end your life. That's a, that's a religion, okay? And that's what these people believe. They believe a religion, a religious belief that agrees with that. And so if you're going to call the authorities, if you're going to call the medical workers and their belief is that they should die and you should die too, then you don't need to call them because you're better off not talking to them. You're better off not going to somebody that wants you dead. Why would you call somebody that wants you dead if you want to live? It doesn't make sense, right? So uh, they've, they've exchanged death for life and called evil good and good evil. And there's no justice in the justice system. There's no medicine in the medical system. It's death. Death is the prescription. Kill, steal, and destroy your family, everything you work for, everything you do. Um, I've got people I know that have, have tried to work, you know, and, and get retirement and everything. And the state says, no, you can't have your retirement. You can't. You, it's all a scam. Everything, Washington state is a scam. Okay. Now I, I'm not saying things won't turn out good for people. Um, that's great. But I'll tell you what, everything I've tried here has been a disaster. Trying to start a family, investing, working. What do I have to show for anything? What do I have to show for taking care of my grandmother or for working to, to take care of my ex-wife or for the youth center that I, that I invested in that the community uh, a lot of the community didn't help me with. They they invested in a new youth center, but you know, what do I have to show for any of that? I don't. I don't have anything to show for it. Undermined. You get undermined. Anytime I try to do something good, I try to stop the drugs in the community. I try to tell people to repent. It's all undermined. Everything that uh, Yahweh tries to do, they undermine. The pastors, a lot of the pastors, not all of them, have accepted money to shut their mouth. You know, talk about false prophets, okay? They've accepted money from the government to shut their mouth. And I'll explain that to you, how that worked. So when I was a child, the, if, if there was a 911 crisis call, uh, any of the pastors, as far as I know, could respond from any of the churches. They could respond to that crisis call and they could read the Bible and they could pray with people and they could tell them about Yahushua Mashiach, Jesus Christ. Now that has all changed. Since Greg By died and the sheriff's office changed um, to the previous sheriff, they changed the policies and the rules. And they said that if pastors wanted to respond to crisis calls, they had to be chaplains of the sheriff's office under a special policy. And they get paid to do that. They wear a sheriff's uniform with a badge. 
and it can say sheriff or chaplain or whatever on their uniform they come out and they stand there and they do nothing if you if some if they do anything they recommend someone get psychological service mental health uh get some food stamps get government assistance now maybe that's changed maybe it's changed but, but that's what i observed I had people in town that told me they wanted to pray with a pastor. I called the pastor, and this didn't even have to do with the sheriff's office or the policies. I called the pastor directly on the phone from one of the churches, and he told me that he would not pray for this woman and that she needed to go to the psychologist. He was not going to provide spiritual support. He's not going to tell her about the Bible. He's not going to pray for her. He's not going to lead her to the Savior. He's going to lead her to the ways of man that the New Covenant says. Paul says in the New Covenant that the psychology of man is evil. That it's destructive, that it's, it's terrible, you shouldn't have anything to do with it. And that is what the pastors are referring people to instead of referring them to the word of Almighty Yahweh. Okay? And they're getting paid to do that. Now, it gets worse. It gets worse. Maybe maybe you don't consider this worse. I don't know. You tell me. You be the judge and the jury watching this video. You tell me what's worse. What the worst thing is I discuss here. So, what happened is, is that there were a few people that lived here and they wanted a job and so there was a government agency that was created here in Pomeroy as Pomeroy in the name and they had those future employees have a constitutional convention to constitute this new branch of government that the people did not vote for it was just these few people from uh, that were going to be employed by it so it's special interests and they got this this thing going and once they got it going they, they establish government psychological services and all kinds of things. They, they start a non-profit agency here with the pastors involved. And those pastors uh, said they were going to teach people to rely on the government. They're going to teach them to get food stamps and social services, psychological services, anything that was available through the government. And they said they were preaching and teaching in the public school. It sounded good, didn't it? So I, I went online to their, their social page and I said Jesus Christ is my source of support just to see how they would react and they said that that's not allowed and I said wait a minute you guys are meeting in the churches you're pastors you're meeting in the churches and Jesus Christ is not allowed I said it doesn't matter if you can get into the public school they said oh yes we can get in the public school now you don't understand Justin it's so much better we can get in the public school I said if you can't bring the gospel with you into the public school if you can't bring the Bible with you in the public school then you're not offering anybody anything you're not offering them life okay you're not pointing them to the way of life you're pointing them to the government and to, the government is a man-made construct of this world it's like an idol it's it's an evil thing okay and you're pointing them to that you're not pointing them to Yahweh now, would I have said the government was evil if the government had given justice for my ex-wife and her children when they were sexually assaulted? Um, no, I, I probably wouldn't have thought they were evil unless I had seen them do other things. Now, that's just my perspective, though. That's not Yahweh's perspective because Yahweh's perspective is that any law that men create is against his law. We're not supposed to add or diminish from it. And not only that, but I'll tell you the other things about government in the Bible. The Bible says we cannot show any partiality. We can't show any partiality. What's the government do? The first to call 911, the plaintiff, the petitioner, the claimant has partiality in a court. Okay? They have partiality because they're the bringer of the case. That goes against the Bible. In the Bible, when you go to the elders of the city, when you go to the judge with a case, you don't have partiality. You're not special. You're not raised above the other one. You're equal until someone's proven guilty. Okay? You're, 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 you're innocent until proven guilty, but that's not the way it works in the American man-made court systems. In the American man-made secular court systems, the defendant is, has, is always lower then the petitioner, the plaintiff, they always have the upper hand, the petitioner, plaintiff, the bringer of the case. It's partiality. The entire system is anti-biblical. The First Amendment to the Constitution for the United States is protection for Satanism, paganism, and all other types of religion that come against Yahweh, the Most High, and His Word. Okay? You can look at it and you can say it's all based on the Bible. I will tell you the truth about the Constitution for the United States and the Founding Fathers. If you look at the colonists that wanted to follow the Bible, that wanted to live by every word that proceeds the mouth of Yahweh, you see them dressed conservatively, modestly. You see the women with their heads covered. You see the men with beards. 
you see these pictures. When you look at the pictures of the Founding Fathers, what do you see? You do not see beards. You see uh, men wearing gray wigs, and you see them dressed in non-modest clothing and flashy suits of some kind that from, from other countries, or whatever imported suits, I don't know. Uh, sometimes with sashes or whatever on their shoulders, these golden, whatever. They've got these great, fantastic things. They're Freemasons. They're 33rd degree Freemasons. They did not have the same interest as the colonists. Their interest was to establish a new Rome. That's what they called the United States. That's what they called the Constitution for the United States. Look at the statue of George Washington as Caesar. Look at the obelisk of George Washington in Washington, D.C. The obelisk is the symbol of Baal, of Baal's penis. That is what the obelisk symbolizes. That's what it's always symbolized. And there's one in the middle of the Vatican, okay, with a solar wheel underneath it. The solar wheel underneath the obelisk represents the vagina of his wife, Ishtar, or Samaramis. And Baal used to be Nimrod. That's who he was before they declared him to be Baal, okay? And this, this is what the nation is founded on. This is what the ways of man are founded on. Egypt, Rome, Greece, all of these nations with multiple deities and the Catholic Church that prays to multiple saints. It all comes from the same thing that, that Nimrod established in Babylon where he started with one false deity and created many false deities to create Babel confusion. He said in the names of his cities, if you put them together into a sentence, that he was going to rule the world, rule the people by Babel confusion. Babel confusion was created by making the narrow road wide. That's one of the names of his cities. It's the wide road, okay? And he created multiple deities under one false deity. And that is how he was going to rule the world, by Babel confusion. But Yahweh turned it around and said, you want to use confusion to rule the world. I babble confusion. I'm going to give you babble confusion. You're going to babble in different languages and you're not going to be in agreement anymore. You're all going to be separated and dispersed and humbled and brought low. And that's what he did. He brought down the tower. What was the purpose of the Tower of Babel? The purpose of Tower of Babel is the same as the obelisk and the other things in Washington, D.C. It was to make a name for yourself. To make a name for yourself. Okay, I talked about how I don't really have anything to show anything for what I've invested in. That's not a matter of me making a name for myself. That's a matter of having a place to live and a family and, and having an income and things to eat and having some kind of security so that I can help others and be a blessing to others, right? And instead, every time that I've invested myself to work at anything, it's been ripped out from under me. It's been taken away from me. And not just me, but others. This wickedness is statewide. It could be federal-wide. It could be worldwide. I don't know where it doesn't exist. Okay? So, the next week, I am preparing to leave. I am preparing to get out of this wicked city because it's going to be destroyed. It's going to come under judgment. It's going to be covered in weeds and animals and ruined destruction. There's going to be invaders. There's going to be an invasion that's coming here to Palmyra, I believe. I've seen it in dreams, and I believe that there's an invasion coming. Now, I've given them the way out. I have given them the way out. It's in this book. It's the way of life. And I've in every situation, whether it's the way the hospital and the ambulance and the medical professionals treated my grandmother, or, or whether it's the way that they treated me and my ex-wife and the other people in this community and the other people in this state, I've given them a way to justice. I've given them a way to show how to repent. And I've told them to follow all the laws in the Bible, before I even knew that that's what Yahweh wanted me to do to personally, to follow him, I told them they need to follow all of the laws in the Bible. That's what they needed to do. Well, I'm going to read to you today, out of here, out of the Bible, and I believe it's chapter 51 of Jeremiah, that's what the page says. And this should make sense to you. It's got a picture here of a town, it's a pile of ruins where animals live. So we're going to start in verse 36, And so Yahweh said to the people of Jerusalem, I will take up your cause and will make your enemies pay for what they did to you. I will dry up the source of Babylonia's water and make its rivers go dry. That's something you see over and over again in the Bibles. When people are wicked, he gets rid of their water supply. That country will become a pile of ruins where wild animals live. It will be a horrible sight. No one will live there 
and all who see it will be terrified. The Babylonians all roar like lions and growl like lion cubs. Are they greedy? I will prepare them a feast and make them drunk and happy. They will go to sleep and never wake up. I will take them to be slaughtered like lambs, goats, and rams. I, Yahweh, have spoken. Okay? Babylon's fate. Verse 41. Yahweh says about Babylon, the, ci the city, that whole world praised has been captured. What a horrifying sight. Babylon has become to the nations. The sea has rolled over Babylon and covered it with roaring waves. The towns have become a horrifying sight and are like a waterless desert where no one lives or even travels. I will punish... Yeah, see, Pomeroy wants to be a travel destination. They want to be this place by the highway and invest all this money into agriculture and making the town look better and all these things instead of, instead of righteousness. They have false righteousness. They have all these groups that say they're going to help families and they're going to build families, but they're not building them on the word. They're not building them on the word of Yahweh. They're building them on psychology, philosophy, doctrines, and commandments of men. It says, in vain do you worship him with commandments and doctrines of men. Okay, worshiping Jupiter and, and Ishtar and Tammuz and all these images. All these images. You go into churches, what are you going to see? You're going to see an image that says Peter on it. That image is not Peter, it is Jupiter. They took, they wrote Peter on the image of Jupiter. A lot of people have been ignorant of these things. You can, you can see the image of Jupiter in the Vatican that's been renamed Peter. Nobody disagrees with that. It's the image of Jupiter. Okay? The image that used to be Tammuz, it's supposed to be Baal's son, Ishtar and Baal's son, Tammuz, has been relabeled Jesus Christ. The image of Ishtar has been relabeled as Mary. Okay? And so on and so forth. Pretty much all these images, these Greek and Roman images, have just been renamed. That's it. I mean, there's a Statue of Liberty. There's all these things. We've got the sun rays coming out of their heads. He says, verse 44, I will punish Bel, the El of Babylonia, and make him give up his stolen goods. The nations will not worship him anymore. Okay? The, the stolen goods. These nations kill, steal, and destroy. They come into your home, they take everything you have, they kill your relatives, they rape your wives, they molest your children, they take everything you've got, and the wicked the wicked take they, they take everybody's substance. The Bible says that the wealth of the wicked will be given to the righteous. Okay, and you gotta make sure that's not a curse to you because when people are blessed with wealth, a lot of people turn to wickedness. So watch out for that. Some, it's better it's better to be poor and righteous than it is to be wealthy and wicked. The book of Proverbs tells us that. Okay? Then we go, Babylon's walls have fallen. Verse 45, People of Israel, run away from there. Run for your life from my fierce anger. Get out of Babylon. Get out of there. Get out. You see it in Revelation. You see it all over the place. Get out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Get out of Babylon. People are saying, Oh, well... We're Christian people. We're going to stand firm. We don't run from anything. Do you run from the wrath of Yahweh like Lot did when they were told to get out? Do you run from Babylon? Or instead, do you go run to Babylon? Do you embrace Babylon? Do you celebrate Halloween? Do you travel clear across the country to go listen to Wicked in concert? To listen to a fake witch or a real witch on stage? Do you embrace the paganism or do you flee from it? Are you like Joseph that ran from Potiphar's wife? Or do you cleave to her and want more? What are you? Are you whores? Are you terrible, wicked people? Or do you run from wickedness? If you don't run to wickedness and you marry wickedness, you'll be destroyed by Yahweh, by his hand. Okay? That's what he does. The way to life is, is doing what's right, is doing what the word says. And I'm going to tell you, it's a joyous thing. To do what's right. And not only that, not only that, but change your diet. Get rid of the sugar and the fat and all these things that, that, that Yahweh asked for in sac offerings and sacrifices in the Bible. Get those things out of your diet because they're causing you to lust after the world. The salt, the sugar, the butter, the carbohydrates, um, anything like that, anything that's going to cause you a problem, uh, just get away from it. Drink water. Drink water. Drink lots of water. 
to flush the sugar and the salt out of your system. You need some salt. Make sure you do retain some water. You might need some electrolytes now and then. But get the junk out of your system. Stop eating the, the unclean foods. Stop eating the unclean foods, okay? And and come out. Come out from it. You know, I thought I was going to have a hard time coming out from this wickedness and getting away from it because I thought I was going to inherit property. And then I found out that that's not the case. I'm not, I was told I'm not inheriting any property. So that makes it easier for me to come out. And I know that there's a great blessing. There's got to be a great blessing somewhere, right? Because Yahweh is good. He's a good father. He's got a place prepared for me somewhere. And I want to continue ministry. I do. I want to continue broadcasting. And I want to continue doing ministry wherever it is that he leads me, wherever I end up. But I, I've gotten so much help from the Messianic Torah observant community in the past. Uh, when my grandma was was having medical issues, they stepped up and they got medical equipment. My uncle also got some medical equipment. They got some medical equipment. They paid for a doctor's visit from a doctor way outside the area over a computer to make sure my grandma got the right help because the other doctors wanted her to die. So uh, they paid for that. Um, they got her a cushion to sit on. They got her. They they were very helpful. And I was very humbled by that. They gave, they told me about the supplements to put her on that were gonna that helped her heart to recover, and and helped to recover from uh, heart failure. You know, so they were very helpful. These people know the way to life because they're reading and following the Bible. It's the way to life. We read here. We're gonna run from Babylon. Verse twenty six. Do not lose courage or be afraid because of the rumors you hear. Every year is a different rumor spreads. Rumors of violence in the land. And one king fighting another, and so the time is coming when I will deal with Babylonia's idols. Uh, the whole country will be put to shame, and all his people will be killed. So you've got these rumors all the time of fear. You're going to be afraid. This is what the Christian. No, we're going to stand. We're going to stay here in the middle. I'm going to give you a story about that. But before I do, turn off your TV. Turn off your TV. The television. Stop watching the news. Just stop it. We only need to listen to Yahweh. In his word, we don't need to listen to all this nonsense in the news. It's nonsense, okay? People were terrified over threats that the government made that they never followed through on. You don't need to listen to it. You can be exempt from the system by making Yahweh your government, your king, your lawgiver, and your judge, and he'll save you. Isaiah thirty three twenty two. You can do that. You don't have to live in fear, okay? But I'm going to tell you, there were three firefighters. I think it was called the Three Mile Fire. And there were three firefighters, and they thought they could put out a forest fire by themselves. They're not running. They're not going to be in fear. And they stood there on a rock with, with a fire hose and, a, and one fire engine, and they all died in that fire because they would not flee Babylon. They would not get out. They would not do that. They thought they could stand against the wrath. They thought they could stand against that forest fire. And it devoured all of them. Okay? So it's, it's, it's stupidity. Okay, if Yahweh tells you he's going to bring destruction and judgment on the wicked and you need to get out of there, then if you stay there, that is stupidity. It's not courage. It's not it's not saying that you have faith and that you don't need to worry about. No, it's obedience. If he tells you to get out, it's obedience. Okay. Verse 40, everything on earth and in the sky will shout for joy when Babylonia falls to the people who come from the north to destroy it. Oh, my goodness. People are going to be grateful when the judgment comes from Yahweh. The righteous are going to, they're going to be saying, oh, good, good. It's been destroyed. The wicked have been destroyed. Okay. Uh, verse 49, Babylonia caused the death of people all over the world. And now, uh, carts, large tank. Let's see, where are we at here? Sorry. And now Babylonia will fall because it caused the death of so many Israelites. I, Yahweh, have spoken. And if you read what Paul says, we've all been grafted into Israel. Okay? So, we need to obey. We need to trust and obey, and we got to get out of here. If wicked people want to come in, and they want to devour our substance, and they want to, um, you know, they want to stay here, they want to, they want to be in Babylon, then let them. Let them stay in Babylon. Let them stay here when the judgment comes. Okay? Because Yahweh will give the wealth of the wicked to the righteous. It's what he does. So if people want to come and they want to they want to do bad things to you in Babylon, get out of Babylon. Why fight for Babylon? 
why stay in Babylon? Why stay in Egypt? There's no reason. You know, when uh, in 2015, uh, there was a bunch of Islamic people and they destroyed 69 churches with pagan images in them. As far as I know, they all had pagan images. They were doing pagan things. And they destroyed two uh, pagan temples. And Isaiah says that they will not be stopped when they go in and do that. When he sends people to do that. And there's not going to be any repercussions. And there weren't any repercussions. But the media said it was terrible. And they had to rebuild the archways to the Temple of Babylon. And, and all this. Because they thought it was terrible. Well the Bible says the world's going to rejoice. The Bible says the world rejoices when the wicked things are destroyed. So let's rejoice in it. Let's be glad. Okay. It's a terrible thing when people have to die. It's a terrible thing when people have to uh, be put through judgment. And the wicked have to be purged. I'll tell you there's people... They seem really nice. They seem like good people. And sometimes they have good intentions. But their lives are so wicked. They, they're involved in witchcraft. They're involved in, uh, in sexual perversion that the Bible says is a sin. They're involved in all kinds of wickedness. They turn against their own families to where uh, they have all of their relatives put in jail. They have their husbands, multiple husbands put in jail. They have their children put in jail. They have everybody put in jail. And then they don't have a family left. And then, then, then they're going to create a new family that's perverse. Right? And it's sad. It's sad to watch that because there's nothing you can do about it. You can tell them the word. You can tell them what the Bible says. But they're going to live how they're going to live. They're gonna, they, they don't see a point. They don't have uncircumcised ears to hear. You say, what's their circumcised ears? Stephen talks about it in Acts, and I believe it's Jeremiah that talks about the uncircumcised ear. It's the same thing as uncircumcised spirit, as far as I know. Uh, you could even say uncircumcised eyes, although that's not in the Bible. It means you got ears to hear and eyes to see what Yahweh is saying. When he says disaster's coming, let's say that somebody walks across the street and they get hit by a bus, okay? And people see that. They witness it. And they say, well, we shouldn't have to look both ways when we cross the street. We're going to do it anyway because we've got freedom. We've got freedom. we got grace. we got grace. We've been, that rule, that law to look both ways before cross the street, it was nailed to the cross. We don't need to do that anymore. We're under grace. And people keep, 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 keep getting run over by trucks and buses on the street. And they say, no, that law to look both ways across the street, that was nailed to the cross. We don't need to do that anymore. And that's the way people treat the Bible. That's the way they treat the Torah is they say that it was nailed to the cross and they don't need to do it anymore. They don't need to follow the Bible and destruction after destruction after destruction and warning after warning after judgment comes in their life. I had somebody recently tell me they're like, it, it wouldn't matter if someone was raised from the dead. And that comes right out of the gospel in the parable of, rich, of, of Lazarus and the rich man, they told me, they said, it wouldn't matter if someone was raised from the dead. These people would not repent. And I said, why is that? And they said, look at the video. They said, look at your video from 2015 because Yahweh sent me to prophesy against the wicked. He brought six of those seven prophecies to pass already. The seventh one is the one to come, this destruction. And he set the entire state of Washington on fire and went into two other states just as I had said, just as I had prophesied, and it went into, it, it was a great flood. Um, Spokane, Washington uh, had a massive winter storm that knocked down all the power lines, power poles. Uh, well, I'm not going to say all of them, but it knocked down a lot of them. It knocked out power everywhere. Maybe it did knock them all down. I don't think it did. Um, but it was a massive storm. It knocked out all the power. They had no way to get warm. That was something I prophesied that was going to happen. And it was it was terrible. The, the federal government refused to help them in the days of their disaster. Uh, the judges that came against me were removed from office. Um, a man next door, I prophesied that a man next door died. He'd come and threaten me and my grandmother. And the deputy came and talked to me. I told him, I said, you want to do something about those drugs? Someone's going to die. And within like the next day, um, the woman that was my neighbor went over the creek, invited him back into her house, and he died there from methamphetamines, Okay. So this is real stuff. This is real stuff. There's been six prophecies fulfilled so far out of the seven. The seventh one is the destruction. It's the destruction. And when I gave that prophecy, um, a judge told me that uh, they, they weren't going to hear that anymore. They weren't going to take it anymore. I'm like, it's not me. It's, it's from Yahweh. It's not my word. It's his word, what he's going to do. Okay? So I'm getting out of here. I'm, I'm going to have to. And it's, it's not by my hand. It's not by my work. It's not by my might, because I don't I don't have any income since my grandmother died, except from YouTube and YouTube 
told me that my videos are dangerous and they told me I couldn't uh, make any money from my videos for seven days so I I haven't really don't have the income to get out of here in my hands in my pocket in my bank the bank I haven't seen the income to get out of here uh, I thought I had a car to use and then I was told uh, this week that uh, the license tabs are not going to be renewed because apparently that's too much work so you know so it's gonna have to be supernatural for me to get out of here and that's why I went to the Messianic Torah Keepers of Yusha HaMashiach and I told them my situation, told them I got to get out of here. Uh, someone was telling me, that, Justin, you have a home. No, it's not my home. I was told it was going to be my home, but it is not my home. Okay, I was told it is not my inheritance. It's not my home. Okay, which makes it easier for me to get out. So the next week, I'm going to be uh, cleaning up everything around here as soon as Sukkot is over. I'm going to be cleaning out everything in this house getting my stuff separated out and compact and ready to move and ready to get out of here so that as soon as Yahweh provides a way um, and and tells me where to go I'll be ready to do it and my bags, bags packed boxes packed um, I'm not sure about the chickens I got like 30 some chickens maybe and uh, I'm not sure how they would make the trip I don't know I'd have to pack them up and take them but I'm just going to trust him and I'm going to wait and see. And, and in the meantime, I'm going to be doing whatever I got to do, working, uh, doing ministry. Um, and the the people that don't think I should be obeying the Bible, they want me to o go over some uh, pastor's material online that they have. And I was told that if I do that, it's going to teach me that anybody that keeps the Torah is going to hell. Um, that's what I was told. And I, I really want to do that, but I haven't had time because I've been applying for jobs cleaning this house and it's been uh was it the three the, the feast of trumpets yom kippur and sukkot and the sabbath so i haven't really had time this month after my ground passed away to get everything done but i'm going to be doing that and what was it this uh this last um first day of the week i was invited to a church and i didn't want to go because i knew i was going to be in front of an image of jupiter and tammuz and uh ishtar and i wasn't supposed to pray or worship in front of those things but they asked me to come anyway and just listen, and I uh, read my Bible, and I opened it up to uh, Jonah uh, rebuking um, Nineveh, that he's going to go prophesy against Nineveh, go, Jonah, go and prophesy against Nineveh, so I did. I went to the church, had a conversation with the pastor afterwards, and uh, and so, you know, I went and did what I was instructed to do, um, and then had some other chores that I had to do that day, so plan is to work here next week, get everything ready. Um, before my relatives return for the funeral and hopefully I'll make them happy too. The house will be nice and cleaned out and then if they want to live here, you know, then uh, hopefully the house will be ready for them, uh, you know, when they get back from Puyallup or Seattle, whatever they want to live here, hopefully the house will be ready for them so they have a comfortable place to live while they're building their new house or whatever they plan on doing. So that would be great. Get everything ready, place for relatives to stay and get my stuff packed up and ready to go. So, thanks so much for watching, and uh, I appreciate your prayers and support um, to, you know, to move ahead with whatever uh, Yahweh wants me to do, and I just need to make this video, I feel like I'm being told that I need to make this video prophesying against Palmer, Washington, perhaps the entire state of Washington, because the authorities say this is a Washington state problem, and it seems to me that the medical problem is a medical problem. It's it's like it's a indoctrination. The doctors in this nation are being trained uh, to evaluate people's lives, and if their lives don't seem like they're worth living, they're not successful. They don't have a house, a car, and uh, guitars and and cars and and what else? You know, I don't know. Lots of income from from being a doctor or whatever it is. Uh, wife and family, children, income, all these good things, gold and silver and precious things. If you don't have a wonderful life, then they don't think your life is worth living. Maybe they think you're too old. What? You're too young. You're, you're too. I don't know. Maybe too uh, obedient to the Bible. I don't know. And they think your life is not worth living, and uh, you need to die. And so that's what they're they're being trained. That's what they must be being trained, being taught, because that's what they keep telling me. Uh, there was a nurse here in Pomeroy, and she told me that it's bad for people to give them hydration. That she was trained. That she used to be a hospice nurse. And she was trained that if you give people an IV, it's bad for them. 
And I'll tell you, uh, there is some truth to what she said because there's lots of salt in it. They put sodium in the IV and some people need sodium. Some people like my grandma don't. It raised my grandma's blood pressure to 188 over 111. They didn't record that though. They kept retrying it till they got a lower number. But that's, that's what happened because she was getting too much sodium for her in her blood from the IV. But you do need hydration. You've got to have hydration to live. And a doctor that was over in Lewiston, he told me, he says, I don't want to give your grandma fluids because if I give her fluids, it's going to extend her life. That's what he told me. Uh, they took her down to, was it, 25 milliliters an hour of fluids. That's the equivalent of drinking a little more than two of these in a day, in like 10 hours or whatever. That's that's the equivalent of like two of these. Uh, this is 236 milliliters right here. Uh, eight ounces of water and that's that's a little more than than two of these in a day that's when my grandma had to go to the hospitals because she was dehydrated she wasn't drinking enough water on her own the last time that we took her and that's the reason she was in there and then they're treating her the same way in the hospital as the dehydration beforehand because they don't want to extend her life they don't want to make her live too long and and then the nurse in Pomeroy told me that there's bad for you Hydration is bad for you, very bad for you. And they said, and if your your organs shut down and the fluid just backs up in you, then yes. If if the fluid's not coming out and it's going in, then yes, you can get too much fluid and that can cause you to drown. It can cause discomfort. It can cause problems. But that never happened to my grandma. She never got more fluid going in than coming out because they took it away. So you know they call evil good, and good evil because of the psychology the philosophy and the commandments and doctrines of men that the Bible says is evil and wrong and bad. Well, you know, do you want to know what the way is to life? The way to life, according to the Bible, how you know if something's right or wrong, it says there's a way that seems right. The way that seems right to man ends in, ends in sin and death. Okay, so you know it's wrong if it ends in sin and death. Okay, so if, if somebody is in a hospital and you, you're going to help them, you're going to do what's right, then you're trying to avoid death. You're trying to prolong their life and you're trying to avoid death and then you know what's right because that's what the Bible says is right, okay? But they've forgotten, like I've been told by other people, they've forgotten. They don't know the difference between right and wrong anymore, okay? I don't know who does. I don't know, you know, children, they teach children to do what the Bible says, because they want them to obey their parents. But when they get older, they tell them, no, you're not supposed to do what the Bible says because it's all been nailed to the cross and you don't have to do it anymore. And that's a lie. That's a lie the serpent told Eve in the garden is that she would not surely die if she sinned against Yahweh. So don't do it, okay? Turn back to him instead. If you want to see, um, I have a video. I'll try to link it in this video or in the description um, of the disasters and the prophecies that happened in 2015. And in 2016, um, there's, there's a whole site for that. The page is just, the first video is just for 2015. And uh, you can see it for yourself. You can see what's happened and you can evacuate Washington State. Today, uh, I got a text message being told they're going to be evacuating the hospital up here as a practice run. And uh, good, maybe the, the chances for survival for the patients will go up as they're being evacuated out of the hospital. I don't know. But... Um, you know, and then they go back in the hospital again. Or what, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know what the deal is. But anyways, um, I don't know what the authorities are going to do here because I gave them a report about what happened to my grandma with all the proof and the paperwork uh, from the hospitals. And and uh, I've been told, that, you know, if there's a deputy and, and we'll see how they react. If they do what's right, then maybe some of them can escape this judgment. Maybe some of them can come out. Uh, I prayed for the deputy that arrested me, I prayed for him that he'd get away from the sheriff's office and get out of the area. And hopefully him and his family have because I, I didn't want bad things to happen to them. But, um, you know, I don't know. I think they might still be living here and working somewhere else. So if the destruction's coming here, then I don't... See, people don't want to get out. They don't want to get out of Babylon. So... If you have not accepted Yahshua Mashiach as your personal Savior, as your Lord and Savior, then let's go ahead and say a prayer. Let's say a prayer anyway. Okay, Pray for these people in Washington State that they will repent and that they will get out of the way of any judgment that's coming. That they will do what's right in the sight of Yahweh. So let's, let's say a prayer. 
Yahweh Av, our Av, our Father, we thank you and praise you that you're so good. We thank you sent your Son to die for us on the cross and forgive us of sins. We confess that you, Yahushua Mashiach, are Lord, you are Yahweh, and that we have sinned against you. We have transgressed against your law. And we ask and thank you for your forgiveness. We need your forgiveness. We thank you died on the cross as a sacrifice, as a payment for our sin. You were punished as a payment for our sins. So we thank you, praise and ask for that. And for baptism, communion, your Huruk HaKadosh, your Holy Spirit. And that as a good Av, as a good Father, you train us up in the way that we should go. That we would not depart from your law. You will your word your way. And we would not seek after or get involved in destruction in any way. We thank you for that. And you, Shaman Mashiach's mighty name above me, I can ask, thank, imagine. And we thank you that uh, you put guardrails around our life. Keep us from going to the left or the right. That we stay on the narrow path that leads to you to be in heaven with you forever and ever and receive all good things. We thank you for all these things. We thank you putting into wickedness and those who will not turn back to you, but we pray they would turn back to you in Yahushua Mashiach's mighty name. To Yahweh Av, above the Elk Nash, think, imagine. We thank you for complete independence from the government, the systems of man's psychology, and all these doctrines of death and stealing, killing, and destroying. We thank you make us completely um, immune and separate from that and holy and set apart. Kadosh, that we would, unto you, that we would not uh, have to make bricks for Egypt anymore, that we would not be taxed, that we would not... Um, that we would not lose our substance, that we would we would keep the things that we work for, that our work, the work that we would do would produce a substance that would not be devoured by foreigners or strangers or even relatives or whoever else or friends or anybody that or the government, that, that what we work, the work that we do with our hands would not be uh, swallowed up or taken away, that there would be righteousness. And we thank you and praise you for that. In Yeshua Mashiach's mighty name, above me, can I thank and imagine you are so good and your mercy endures forever. And so we thank you for that, that you establish us, that you've got a place for us, that you take all the blessings, all the things that have been devoured and stolen from us by the enemy, that you've got a place for us where we can, we have a house, where we have a wife and children, family and come and all good things, where there is water flowing and milk and honey and all good things that would not be used for evil, evil that would not cause us to transgress against you, that we would not um, have a bad diet or do things that would not forget you or your law or the wonders you've done. And that we would see these things, we would repent, we would remember these things, teach them to our children and children's children for all generations, that all people would turn back to you and receive you with their whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. And accept your whole word, that they would have the, the power of your gospel and follow your law, that they would have salvation and keep your law. We know that even the Quran, even the Quran says that without the gospel and obedience to the Torah, they have nothing. So the people, they should be following you too. They should be following your gospel and receiving Yahushua Mashiach and keeping the law. Because even the Quran says that that without salvation and Yahushua Mashiach, without the gospels and without the Torah, we have nothing. So let's let's live by every word that proceeds the mouth of Yahweh in the Bible, not the Quran, but in the Bible. In Yahushua Mashiach's mighty name, above me, can I thank and imagine. We thank you for every way you speak to us through prayer, through prophecy, through dreams and visions and signs and wonders and miracles and all good things. And we rebuke all Halloween, all witchcraft, all evil spirits. And we kick it out and we command your angels to come down and arrest any witches and warlocks, sorcerers, magicians, and bind them to their own bodies and keep them away from us. And that they would not uh, influence us at all. They would not be influenced by them. That they would leave us alone and depart from us. And I pray that you make a way, just like Israel crossed the uh, the reds the, the dead sea um, or the reds whatever sea it was that they I think it was the red sea whatever sea it was that they crossed outside of Egypt I believe it was the Jordan and the and the Dead Sea um, when they came into Israel they crossed the Jordan uh, I just pray that you'd part it and make a way you'd make a way for us and you'd provide everything we need that we'd go out with substance with reward that we'd go out just as your children went out from Egypt that we'd go out with wealth. So we could go into the new land and they would not make any golden calves. We would not bring the ways of man with us. We would not erect up common law or statutory law of men or constitutional law or any any doctrines and commandments, any doctrines and commandments from the churches or from the Judea, from the Talmud or anything like that. We leave it all behind and crush it under our feet and we turn to your word only in Yeshua Mashiach's mighty name. Above me, can I think, imagine, place us and settle us in a land, in a new land, with your name, and we follow you with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to be under you and your word alone, and not under any Roman government, any any uh, Republican Roman government, or 
or d democracy or anything like that. We want to be under you. We want to be completely and totally under you and in your way in the Bible, which includes, uh, you know, elders that talk and, and vote on things and then have influence. But we want to seek you first and get your answers. We want to know your way because that's more important. That vetoes everything else. That is the most important answer right there. When we read the Bible, one man will seek you and get an answer and everyone is supposed to follow it. A group of, of priests will, will seek you. Prophets, they will seek you. They get a word from you. The whole nation follows after them. It's your word that's supreme. You are the king, lawgiver, and a judge. It's not up to us to vote on whether or not to follow you. We need to follow with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we thank you for that. And you, Hashem, and Sheikh's my name. We don't need to establish administrative government. You are our king. We don't need a legislature. You are our lawmaker. And you are a supreme judge, although you've appointed us to judge as well. You are a supreme judge. You are a king, our lawmaker, our judge, and you will save us when we make we turn you with our whole hearts, mind, and strength and treat others the way you want us to, to treat them. And we know from your word how we're supposed to treat others. You have to read your word, read the law, read your word and how to treat others. Read your parables, read the gospels. Because if we don't, it says you're going to cast us into hell. You're going to, however people treat the least of these, they treat you. And those who mistreat the least of these are going to hell. That's what your word says. And, and even the man who said he kept the law would not treat others well by selling everything he had and giving to the poor. You said he could not receive salvation unless he did so. So we got to treat others well. We got to keep your word. We got to do our best to follow you with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength and receive salvation and baptism. We got to be transformed. We got to be a new creation. We got to be a holy and peculiar set apart people like the new covenant and the old covenant says. It's not that each covenant adds to the previous one. There's seven covenants in the Bible, one book, one testament, and every covenant adds to the previous one. Okay? If none of them have been abolished or done away with. And we thank you for that. In Yeshua Mashiach's mighty name, above milk, can think, imagine. We pray for all people to receive all these things, turn back to their whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. All people and all generations, everyone's children and children's children, and even in previous generations, everybody would turn back to their whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. We thank you. Let no one snare us. Let no one get in our way. Let us not be uh, like those in the Bible who you said you wanted to wipe out the wicked and they said no um, because then they died with them. So we pray that you, whatever your will is, it would be done. Whatever your perfect will is, we thank you and praise you. We pray everybody would repent and turn back to you and be righteous in your sight. We thank you and you, Shem, Sheikh's mighty name. Above me, I imagine. Yahweh Av, our Father and who art in heaven, our Av who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Your kingdom come, your holy, holy, holy. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so, right now there's BibleCourts.com. I don't know what's going to pay for that uh, web hosting to get renewed. Um, there's, you know, expenses there. And uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to pay for me to move. I don't know what's going to pay for me to do ministry. I don't know any of that. I'm just going to trust in Yahweh to take care of it. If you guys want to help out, you can. Um, but thanks so much for watching. Please share the video and like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'm going to try, when I have time, to broadcast to Rumble and YouTube and every network where I can live stream. Let me know in the comments where you think I should live stream. Be using OBS software, uh, probably with RTMP. So let me know. I want to simultaneously stream to every platform I can. Um, with a, a basically a bunch of videos, it'll be music, sermons, discussions, presentations. That's the plan. So, uh, yeah, prayers and support for that. I don't know how soon that's going to start because, like I said, I got to clean this house, get ready to move, and get everything set up for the broadcast here. As long as I'm here, and uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. I just don't want to make bricks anymore for Egypt, and uh, and and have to gather straw. I, I want to be able to uh, to be blessed now. I want to reap what I've sown um, and and work for the kingdom. I do. I want to I want to ministry. I want to work for the kingdom and uh, stop making bricks. So, anyways, thanks so much. May you have bless you, new Shem Sheikh's my name. All right, thank you. Bye. Wisdom is crying in the streets for all to hear. They run around the town as if they didn't care. Yet time and time again he beckons to the fools Like swine they trample over every precious jewel 
shofar sounded from the watchman on the wall. And jeering laughter is the answer to the call. While the blood upon the altar still speaks mercy on us all. A woman wipes her mouth and says, I've done no wrong. Wisdom comes to her with healing in his arms. In smug complacency, she chooses to ignore. Her sins are piled high and judgments at the door. The shofar sounded from the watchman on the wall. And jeering laughter is the answer to the call. While the blood upon the altar Still speaks mercy on us all. Sounded from the watchman on the wall. 